Well, I want to welcome everyone to You Ask, We Answer. It's a question and answer format. And today I'm joined by General Motors CFO Paul Jacobson. We're here to answer some of the burning questions about EVs and GM's journey to an all electric future that we have seen and heard from many of you. So let's dive into these questions. Gerald, I'm excited about this. I think it's going to be fun. I always love talking about EVs, their capabilities, the experience, and all the world changing goals we have here at GM. So, Paul, how do we know we have the right EV strategy here at General Motors? And what if people don't want them? And what if they don't want EVs? What's your thought? Well, if there's one thing I've learned here at GM, uh, Gerald, it's that we research everything and uh, customers are really willing to give us their thoughts and their opinions, their hopes, their fears, everything that they love and and want to see changed about vehicles. And, and that goes right into the heart of what we build and create. And I think we address some of these things head on when we talk about we know people are concerned about the range capabilities. We know people are concerned about access to charging. And when you look at the depth and breadth of vehicles that we're going to put into our portfolio, and then you add to it the $750 million that we've committed to charging infrastructure, whether it's inside dense urban communities or it's out on America's highways to help road trip anxiety. Um, lots of great things coming, coming ahead of us, and I can't wait to see us roll them out. So I get asked all the time, Gerald, is, is driving an EV the same as a gas powered vehicle? In many, in many respects, yes, right? There's a door you have to get in. There's a seat you have to sit in. There's a steering wheel, uh, you know, there's an accelerator, a brake. Uh, the functionality of it is the same, but there are differences. One, they're quiet. There's no engine rev. Two, uh, there's no gear shifting that you would have associate with a normal transmission. It's just smooth fluid increasing power. Three, you, do, you don't ever have to go to a gas station again. <laughs> For sure. You know, I had the experience of uh, taking one of our test Hummers out uh, from Michigan to Atlanta to drive my daughter home from college. And and um, it was an amazing experience. Uh, the sophistication of the car and the fact that it, it tells you everything you need to know about range and charging access and maps you to locations. It makes it really easy. So what do you think, uh, Paul, makes our General Motors EVs different from the others that are out there? Well, you know, I think, Gerald, the, it really is the foundation of Ultium. This is something that we've been working on um, really, really hard for the last several years. And what it is, it's a modular battery. It allows us to make everything, electric cars, trucks, SUVs, even putting it into commercial vehicles and sometimes boats um, and using that exact same platform. And it allows us to scale EV production in a way that really no other automaker can using the versatility of that platform. We get the widest ranging EV product portfolio out there from luxury all the way to more affordable models. And we're doing this in a way that the rest of the market hasn't figured out how to do yet uh, in terms of serving that wide breadth of, uh, of customers. Is making an EV different than making a gas powered vehicle? So if I just take uh, what we do in a vehicle assembly plant. I'm going to say very little change. 80% of the vehicle remains the same, still has doors, deck lids, hoods, seats, steering wheel, windshield wipers, all those things. It's just that instead of pushing up underneath it and marrying a chassis with an engine and a transmission on it, we're going to marry a battery up underneath it. That's the difference. And it's one of the last stages of the build process, in fact. So body shop's the same, paint shop's the same. Uh, most of GA is the same. It's chassis marriage that's different. And of course, the testing and validation that we do at the end. Where it is very different, though, is obviously where you have a battery, you no longer have an engine. And so the work that we do today to build some very fantastic, capable and amazing engines, um, eventually that has to be replaced with battery assembly, battery modules and cell manufacturing. And that's where the real difference lies. So let me let me ask another question, Paul, that I think is on the minds of a lot of people. Uh, there's concern about, you know, the exp how expensive an EV might be and how can General Motors realistically make it affordable so that everyone can participate in this all EV future? 
this is one of the things that I think is really underappreciated about uh, GM, Gerald, is that, you know, we're, as you know, we're creating EVs at every price point. You know, we're investing over $35 billion in electric and autonomous vehicles through 2025. Uh, vehicles like the Hongguang Mini EV in China, the Chevy Bolt EV and EUV, the Hummer EV, Cadillac Lyric, Bright Drop delivery vehicles, the Silverado EV, the Equinox, Blazer, all of these uh, things are coming together for an EV for, for everyone. And, you know, even with Honda, we plan to develop an affordable EV at a lower price point than even the Equinox, below $30,000. So it's really exciting what we're doing. And this is all coming very, very fast. We already have the GMC Hummer EV out. The Lyric has started production. And, uh, and we're just going to have a flurry of vehicles coming out over time. Many of these vehicles uh, will all be on sale by 2027. And we're expecting to do millions globally. And we've committed to getting a million EVs produced annually by 2025 uh, in North America alone. So it's happening, it's happening now, and it's happening really, really fast. And it's happening for everyone, which is something that the EV revolution to date really hasn't addressed how we're going to get into the heart of the market of, uh, of vehicles. So, Gerald, I have to ask, with this, uh, with this pace that we're on, will there be a time where there are no gas-powered vehicles on America's roads? Paul, I sit here now and I say 100% there will be. And I'm almost certain that a hundred years ago, there were some guys on a video calls saying, do you think there'll be a time where there's no horse and buggies? And some guy probably said, yes. Uh, you know, this, this is a transformation. It's happening. Uh, it will take time. We will have electric vehicles and ICE vehicles, you know, that we're producing one, but also on the road for, you know, a couple of more decades for sure. But the momentum is there. And the benefits are there, the value is there, the um, responsibility uh, to, to climate change, I think we all bear and carry as well. All these things are going to move us in a direction where there will come a day where there will only be electric vehicles on the road. So Gerald, why should someone want to work for GM? Why would anyone not want to be a part of changing the world? changing mobility, being a part of an industry and transformation, contributing to uh, the improvement to climate change and the issues associated with it, and quite frankly, doing it by making beautiful vehicles with some great people. I think there's no better time than now to be a part of General Motors and what we're trying to accomplish. What about you? You know, Gerald, I've been so blessed with the opportunity to join this team, and I, I share with uh, my team regularly that, uh, you know, it's always worth taking a moment out of your week to just pause and reflect on what we're doing. And, you know, I, I often talk about it in terms of we're writing the history books that our grandchildren and great grandchildren are going to read one day about the transformation. And uh, to be a part of something like that, uh, to help energize it, to help fund it, to help accelerate it. Is, is a real blessing every single day. And uh, besides working um, for a company with great people that makes beautiful cars, we, we get to make great cars surrounded by beautiful people too. So uh, excited about that part as well.